encouraging you to. Speaker Johnson, if you want to fund Ukraine. National security begins with border security. We have said that all along. That's, that has been my comment since late October. It is my comment today. Are you What's worried about the constitutional president that could be set by each of New York if I could come back to bite you when the tables are here? I am not. National security begins with border security. It's worked for a long time, but eventually when the country sees you do the bidding of the former president instead of taking legislative victories at the border, these one-liners lose their effectiveness. So now the House Republicans have firmly established that they were just kidding about the border enforcement principles. They have to give their reasons for now opposing Ukraine aid. So you don't think that Ukraine needs any aid from the United States? We need to have weapons, not slush funds. We need to have, but we also need to make sure that these weapons go fast as a deterrence, not go to a lot of associated causes and, and slow work the aid. We've been slow working aid now for almost two years. Putin digged in, mined the fields. We now have a serious situation over there, destabilizing now Middle East, who you know, pretty much teamed up with Iran, China, and North Korea, okay. and really causing a lot of headaches. So, I think so you... we need to be smart, and we're not doing that. Representative Victoria Sparts was born in Ukraine and worries about where all the funds will go, how it'll be spent, and whether or not it actually helps the situation. These are all great questions to have answered before committing billions of more tax dollars to conflicts that we personally don't know the details of. The inconsistency is that we don't tend to care very much about how our tax dollars are spent in virtually every other conflict that we engage in around the world, where we've lost and wasted trillions, ignoring the few people that ask these very same questions. So the difference in the Russian invasion is that the former president promised Putin that he'd support him in doing whatever the hell he wants. See if you can find any concerns Sparks may have with that. If a Republican presidential candidate, if a Republican presidential candidate who may end up being president says, I hope Russia does whatever the hell it wants, how will Putin respond to that? Well, listen, you know, uh, President Trump, he does a lot of campaigning, but he's been a tough negotiator. If you think about him pushing NATO allies to meet 2%, is it good for Putin or it deters Putin more? Do you think pushing Germany not to be dependent on, you know, on natural gas from Russia, is it really good for Russia or actually deters them more? Do you think given weapons, not blankets like Obama did to Ukraine, do you think it's deterrence? And he's the one who actually told Putin, not under my watch. So I wouldn't worry about what he's campaigning, but what his strong actions deter a lot of aggression and brought a lot okay. of peace during his watch and aggressors didn't move. No matter the topic, Republican talking points dictate that they claim Donald Trump means what he says and does what he means, unless they later claim that he's joking or just campaigning. And just like cartoon supervillains, they always spill the beans about their plans, maybe just for a little bit of clout. The bill funds Ukraine through September 2025. That's nine months into what will be my father's second term, okay? They're doing this to try to prevent my father from being able to easily make peace. We all understand that the second he gets to the table, he can end this. If you pull the money away, if you make stopping the endless flow of stupid money with no accountability, no checks and balances, nothing, an impeachable offense, they know they can keep their war going. That's what they're trying to do. Don Jr. thinks that he can just characterize his father telling Putin to do whatever the hell he wants as him making peace. He has to find some way to avoid the fact that the Russian leader prefers Trump's destructive plans for our country. His promises are so stark that President Biden is taking the gloves off and trying a little harder to highlight the capitulation. He's still got a little ways to go on that front. If an ally didn't spend enough money on defense, he would encourage Russia to, quote, do whatever the hell they want, end of quote. Can you imagine a former president of the United States saying that? The whole world heard it. The worst thing is he means it. No other president in our history has ever bowed down to a Russian dictator. Well, let me say this as clearly as I can. I never will. For God's sake, it's dumb, it's shameful, it's dangerous, it's un-American.